Alrighty, well we're at Kings Island, which is kind of interesting to uh, do a demo video at Kings Island. But here we are. So here it is, model roller coaster that I've been working on for forever. It's finally ready to go. It's the second day of engineering day. So let's do a quick demo. So on the panel, we've got, uh, this is what it looks like when it comes online. Um, after you switch the control power on, uh, you'll get a, uh, you, the ride stop will be uh, on and the e-stop will be pulled up and your auto start will be flashing and the auto start button will basically put the ride into the auto mode. So if you look on the HMI real quick, you can see that the ride status is currently stopped. Um, so once I push auto start, that status will actually change from stopped to auto. And as you can see on the panel, your panel lights have changed as well. So now the ride stop is flashing because the ride stop is no longer on and you're ready to start the lift. The lift will only start when it's in a safe, uh, safe mode. So what I can do is I can push the uh, lift start button and once the lift is started and ready to go, you get the advanced dispatch button if the train is safely ready to, ready to run. So to go ahead and send it, you're gonna push down and hold the button down until the train's fully advanced uh, through the station block. So as you can see, I have to hold the button down the whole time. And then the lift automatically does it all by itself. The cool thing about the lift hill is that it's a, uh, a cable lift system similar to uh, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. So it has a full catch car that runs up and down the lift hill. So as you can see, you can see the catch car returning back down. And I can't send the train right now because the uh, catch car is not back. All right, so now we'll send it again. But this time, I'm not going to advance that train off the readies block. So the point of this thing is to kind of demo what a block system is. So clearly, as you can see, the train is moving slow up the lift hill, um, and that's because there's a, a train in the next block. This is to keep trains from crashing into each other. And as you can see, once it gets to the very top, it will stop. Until I push the button, move it forward into the uh, station, and then it will automatically re restart and run on its own. So, there's some couple of other features because this I went all out on programming this thing. So in the case that you wanted to, let's say somebody had their phone out or something stupid like that on the ride, you can actually push lift stop and it will stop only the lift. But you can still move the trains. If the train was in a safe to move area, you could actually move the train forward. And just to restart the lift, you just push the button again and it restarts itself. I have another button that will stop everything called Ride Stop. Ride Stop basically kicks the ride out of the auto mode and just stops everything, but it's not going to trigger a fault here. Um, the way that you would stop the ride and kill like power to all of the moving devices is you would hit E Stop and that would stop the whole thing. And if you look on the HMI display, you'll see that we have triggered an emergency stop at the main operator control panel. So to reset the e-stop, you pull up the e-stop button. As you can see, the trouble light is on, and now it's flashing. When the trouble light is flashing, that means that basically the system is ready to come out of the faulted mode. It is uh, safe to come out of the faulted mode. So you push the trouble light, you push auto start, restart the lift, and you're rolling again. And it will roll just like normal. So there are some other faults programmed into the ride because roller coasters are safe because they have all of these faults programmed in. So when you are on a ride and it stops for whatever reason, it's because something went wrong and the system detected that something was wrong. So let's say hypothetically, um, you know, something came in front of one of the sensors and the system doesn't really know what's going on. So if I trigger this sensor up here with my watch because it's metal, it will actually put it into a faulted mode. So if you can see on the panel here, the trouble light is on, which means we've got a problem. And now that we go over to the HMI display, we're on the maintenance screen, um, we can see that we have a lift parking fault. And you can see the, the fault right here. And um, the way you reset it is you turn this for two seconds to switch the ride into manual mode, and then just simply hit reset, just like that. And then we can switch the ride out of manual. And as you can see, the trouble light has started flashing again to you know, tell the uh, operator that the system is ready to come out of the faulted mode. You can click on that, auto start, restart lift, and you're back and running again.
Now the thing about um, those faults is that it really doesn't matter. Um, if the train is running up the hill, you know, if I fault that sensor right there, it's gonna stop everything. I can't do anything anymore, right? Same thing again, we can see that I triggered the lifts, the, the station parking fault that time. Um, and I can just reset it just like this. One more time. And, and there we go. And just like that, we are back and ready to run again. Advance that crane forward, and it will move just like normal. So, there are many different screens to the HMI itself. You've seen the maintenance display for resetting faults and whatnot. But you know, the operator would probably normally have it in the uh, operations mode. So, this is uh, a general overview screen of what the track looks like. So, we have our ready brakes, which is where the far train is right now. Uh, we have the station block, which is where the train is sitting in the station. And as you can see, each one of these squares represents a, uh, a sensor. So if the sensors are yellow, that means the sensor has been flagged. Um, so there's a train in the station right now. There's a train on the main and ready brakes. The lift hill here is currently not occupied, so you see nothing is wrong there. Alrighty, so just to show a cycle as it goes around, you can see all of the uh, sensors turning on and off. So see, it's crossed through the uh, lift and gauge check sensor. And it's about to clear the top of the lift hill. There it goes. And there you go. So let's say in the case that we do throw a fault on the operations display, which is what the uh, operators would normally be looking at. Like, see that now the uh, block has gone red and flashing um, basically to you know tell the maintenance guy or the operator that the, the problem is here it's right here right um, and you can see that we also get a, a, a second display that shows where or what the fault is um, that it's lift parking fault um, and that the sensor was unexpectedly flagged and you know you reset it the same way you go to the maintenance display Turn the key, one, two, and reset it. Turn it one, two to switch it back to the uh, stopped mode. And we can reset the trouble and start the ride and start the lift. And on this display as well, the green represents that the bit in the processor is flagged or not flagged. So if it's clear, the green will be on this side, and if it's flagged, it's on this side. And the same thing happens when you run the ride. You can see the, uh, the sensors turning on and off um, as a train passes through the track. And the maintenance display is laid out so that you know you have a station block, a lift block, and a ready block. Um, and all the sensors are grouped in order from the beginning of the block to the end of the block. Um, also on the maintenance display, if you wanted to run the uh, lift or any part of the ride in manual mode, you can switch the ride to manual and jog forward, jog backward, and it also has faults for all of the moving devices. Um, so like a station timeout would be if the motor's not running in the station, it would it has a timer that will time out after a certain period of time and shut the ride off. Um, power supply fault will be for like if you had a power failure like uh, if um, you know you lost power to the ride that will turn on when you power the ride on next time so um, another thing that's very useful that I would have loved to have had at my ride when I was running it is these this quick uh, quick stats display down here all of this gray down here shows um, shows all of the pertinent details to the ride so um, here you have capacity because capacity is critical for everything um, you have to write it down all the time so for right now cycles is 15 riders is 60 and last hour cycles is zero riders is zero um, and so you can you know know how many trains you've sent um, based on that and you can also send like an empty seat if there's a rider not there or a full empty train um, if you just send a full empty train um, you also have the ride status, which we've been looking at a little bit here, and you also have um, cycle stats, which shows you an average speed, how long it took for the train to go around the track, and the last cycle brake speed, which is basically how fast the train came back into the brake run, which is very critical for model roller coasters, more so than real roller coasters, because 
the bearings in those little cars wear out after a good period of time and you get a lower speed. So in the case that we get a lower speed, we'll actually get a, uh, a warning displayed on the bottom uh, panel that will tell us uh, that, you know, it's probably a good time to change the car out on the uh, model coaster. The cars last like three hours-ish. So since we're talking about hardware, uh, we can go around a little bit here. Um, so we've got the HMI display, which is you know critical to everything on the ride. Um, you know, allows you to see everything you've got. Um, you've also got statistics here to show you all what's going on and um, you know everything. Uh, we've got the control panel here, which is all controlled with a uh, with a Arduino under here. The Arduino controls the lighting and um, these contact blocks here. Uh, you know, uh, allow the uh, the wires coming in from the PLC to come into here, and so that you know, if these tug a little bit, we're not going to pull connections out. Um, all of these are the bottoms of the buttons underneath the panel. Um, this side is lights. This side is the actual button presses. Um, so you can flip that down and walk over here. So all the wires run through these uh, these wire runs now, which is like a lot better. It looks a lot more clean now because of that. I've also upgraded the processor um, to a Slick 500. Um, this is the PLC that's controlling the whole operation here. Um, it's a SLC 5 03 uh, um, processor, and it's got uh, two inputs and two output cards in it. Um, this input is uh, taking data from all of the sensors around the track, and you can see that two are turned on because two of the trains are sitting in the station right now. Um, on this, you can see that uh, this is for the uh, control panel, and the lights are turned on to say that we have connection to the control panel. Um, this output controls all of the moving devices on the ride, so motors and speed control and all that stuff. Um, and the speed control is actually done uh, through this uh, Arduino and this um, L298N motor driver. And basically what I did was I put in a set of functions so it takes a three-bit binary number based on what the outputs look like here. Um, to tell it what speed to go at and it has a function that will ramp the motor up to a certain speed and ramp the motor down depending on what that 3-bit binary number is. Um, also, uh, in the case, we have a, uh, an output for all of the lights on the control panel. So this output, uh, basically, uh, one zero is for um, on and the next zero is for pulsing. So if the e-stop is on, the light will be on. If the second uh, bit for the e-stop is on, then it'll be pulsing on the control panel. And there's a communication protocol that I developed on the Arduino that allows it to talk through a serial connection to the Arduino in there, and that's what turns the lights on and off. So another one of our physical devices is the actual lift hill itself. Um, the lift hill was actually probably one of the biggest challenges of making the model roller coaster because I wanted to do this cable lift hill like, uh, like Millennium Force and Cedar Point. Um, so the lift I had to completely design in um, a computer-aided design program. So you can actually see the full lift hill, you know, in the computer-aided design. I split it up into these uh, parts that I could print out and uh, bolt together on site. So um, I printed the whole thing over probably the period of about a month, and uh, it works quite nicely. So the thing that uh, the reason that it had to be like this was because of A, the cable here, and this curve. Normal connects doesn't allow you to do a curve uh, with the chain going up. You can see on this side the uh, lift is winding up and on this side it's letting out string and we have a, an encoder that I built out of a, uh, a piece of aluminum tape and an uh, inductive proximity sensor. And that inductive proximity sensor actually used to run on a real ride. It's called the Texas Shootout at uh, Six Flags Over Texas. So, a little piece of amusement park history right here. Um, <laughs> it's pretty cool. But yeah, um, that's pretty much the model coaster. Um, to sum it all up.